Um, so, hello and welcome uh, back to Leon for the second of our Women's World Cup podcasts. Um, we now know our finalists. It will be USA against the Netherlands on Sunday after the Netherlands won 1-0 after extra time against Sweden last night. Um, but we'll go back sort of to the start of the day. We went to the fan zone. Fair to say the Orange Army were out in force and similar to the night before where America outnumbered us. They certainly outnumbered Sweden last night. They certainly did. It was a part of the atmosphere down there, Sam. It's, uh, it was a good event. The, uh, the city of Leon have, have done the World, Women's World Cup proud, I think. Um, lots of activities for young and old alike and uh, everyone's very welcoming. And as you say, it was sort of like party mode for the the Dutch Orange Army who uh, singing and dancing even brought their own orange double-decker bus with them. Yeah, uh, that was that was some scene to see in the, in the middle of uh, Place Bellacor last night. Um, hundreds of Dutch fans singing and dancing before three, four hours before kickoff in searing Leon heat, I think it's fair to say, yesterday. Um, but yeah, we, as you've seen on social media, we got the flag out, the Dutch fans were certainly liking that, got a few good pictures with them. Yeah. Um, again, it was another great atmosphere at the ground, not quite as packed as it was the night before, but that's to be expected with America being in the other semi-final. Um, but just looking at the game, um, two two decent sides two sides i feel are probably not as good as the two that played the night before um but holland eventually came through it it was a bit of a slog but they, they got through it in the end yeah the game took a while to get into to be fair i think the first half was a bit of a, a chess match sort of thing um but there were some very experienced players out there on show um but Lee Martins for the Dutch didn't get into the game and was subsequently taken off at half time. But um, the the game sort of like grew as a spectacle as it went on. I think the, the Swedes was well organised at the back and you can tell with the amount of caps that some of their players have got. You've got four or five players, well over 100 caps for them. Um, their defensive foot back fourth for me was, was outstanding apart from the one mistake later on. Um, one of the big influences for me was the change when uh, the Dutch brought Van den Sanden on the, the, the Leon player. She brought a bit of energy to the Dutch. Um, but as you say, they probably were at the same level as the, the two teams the night before. But um, anything can happen in a cup final, as we know. I mean, in our opinion, England was the better side and have gone out. And again, last night, Sweden was the better side. Just couldn't finish the chances. Some, Cracking goalkeeping from uh, Van der Veden in the in the Dutch goal kept the Dutch in it early on. I showed her experience and a class as a captain. Um, but yeah, it was a thoroughly enjoyable game. Yeah, well, it was. Um, the, again, like you say, Sweden arguably the better side. Um, Blackstinius and Aslani up front were threats. Um, both teams hit the woodwork in the second half, but. Um, for Niedemar for Holland in the 66th minute but it was a brilliant save from uh, Lindahl in the Swedish goal she was fantastic last night other than the eventual winning goal um, she kept her side in it but it was it was sort of a chess match type of game there was you could tell there not was many chances stage, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and I, I think it was it was going to come down to a decent finish and it was from Jackie Ronan who hopefully um, has just joined Man United this season to join the likes of Abby McManus and Alex Greenwood from the England ranks and as we know City Ladies will be hosting Man United for our very first home game down at North Ferriby United on the 4th of August it would be nice if uh, we could see some of those stars but obviously Man United are a team packed full of stars both young and old so it would be a tremendous experience just for our girls to pit the wits against any, any full time side just to see how we're going but the the, the finish from Gronan deserved to win a game to be fair and one refreshing fact it was the game was won by a fair goal with no VAR interference which again didn't take away from any of the passion of the Dutch that it had done for us the previous night when Helen's goal was, was ruled out so that to me was was a good thing um, but the Swedes to their credit looked like they were tiring in the second half but the young on and, and went into extra time and it was just a, 
a very crisp shot from Gronum that won the game for them. Yeah, I mean, it would be great to see some of them calibre of players down at City for that friendly. Um, whether it'll happen or not, we'll have to wait and see. But just to have Man United come in, as we've discussed, is massive anyway. Um, but yeah, Sweden kept going right till the end. They, they did look like they tired a bit. What it probably was the Dutch's fitness that got them through in the end, I would say. Um, but uh, I don't think that America will have been sat there fearing either of those two sides, really. Well, I think we sort of like we judge that from from some of the Americans' reactions on the tram and that coming home. That basically, they've already won. They've already won the competition, which I think at elite level you have to have a certain amount of arrogance and the Americans have got that in abundance but they've also got quality and talent in the side <coughs> but <coughs> the Dutch they're the reigning European champions um, they've got some class in the side <coughs> um, the girl from Arsenal is it I can't remember her name at the up front um, <coughs> uh, Miedema Miedema yeah, yeah who's the record goal scorer at 22 years old she posed the threat all night she one or two times she could have pulled the trigger and she just seemed to want to take one or two touch but that was the tenacity of the, the Swedish defence in my opinion <laughs> so they have got threats Lika Martins is a world class player so they shouldn't be taken lightly my only fear is, is that if the Americans start like a house on fire like they have done for every game I think they've scored in the first 10 minutes of every game at this tournament which automatically puts you on the back foot the, the Dutch don't go into themselves and invite the Americans onto them. I think they have to try and match them for pace, skill and stamina early on and see where the game takes them because we've seen with the Americans in games that if you can stay with them for a period of time that it doesn't always go their way and as we are European I would love to see the Dutch win it as maybe slight payback for some of the arrogance that the Americans have got but it would be nice for a country close to where we're from to bring the World Cup back to back to Europe. Yeah, it would be great to see. And nice to see a new winner. Yeah, I do think it will be difficult, especially the Americans seem to be fitter, stronger, faster than nearly everybody here anyway. And Holland have one less day to prepare and have just played extra time as well. So it's not that all the cards are sort of stacked against Holland, but stranger things have happened in sport and anything can happen in football that's why we love the game that's why we watch it it's so you know it could and who knows a, a, a dodgy var decision or something could go against america and holland could pull off a shock so we're definitely looking forward to that one it should be a great atmosphere with the dutch fans who are absolutely fanatical and obviously the american fans who are here in the numbers so it's it will be a final to look forward to on sunday i, I think for in terms for the organizers maybe aside from England it's probably the dream final for them you'll have two massively <coughs> vocal passionate sets of fans to fill the stadium along with neutrals like ourselves who have been blown away by the organization of everything um, it's it's a credit to everyone involved especially in the city of Lyon the way they've welcomed everyone from different nationalities being accommodating friendly helpful and to see that stadium full and to actually witness a World Cup final is something that I'm relishing and can't wait to see. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fantastic. We've got obviously got a few days to explore the city between now and then. We'll uh, keep posting updates on social media, getting the flag out wherever we can. Um, it's been going really well so far. Um, but yeah, it's it's just been a fantastic couple of days, um, despite the result for England. But it's just. Just one of those things really, we we'll look forward to bigger things with the Olympics and the Euros in England in the next couple of years. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, keep you up to date before the final on Sunday and then we'll have another one of these probably after the game on Sunday reflecting on the, the eventual winners and the whole atmosphere of a World Cup final which is just going to be fantastic to experience on yeah. Sunday. I mean before that we have got the third, third fourth place playoff which I think the result last night and the extra time will be beneficial to England and I know we haven't won the tournament or got to the final but it would be fantastic for the achievements of Phil Neville, Steph Horton and all the squad that they leave this tournament with a third place and a bronze medal because their efforts have deserved it. I think Neville's brought a breath of fresh air to the the burgeoning phenomenon that's the women's football that 
the, the country has grown into and, and some of the girls now are recognised in their own right as famous people for, for who yeah. they are. Ellen White has become a superstar. Uh, Man City have got another fantastic addition to the ranks for next season. So that bodes well for a fantastic women's Super League competition. As I say, Man United have signed Jackie Gronin and have got England internationals there. So looking forward to the Women's Super League, that should be a fantastic competition next year and hopefully we see more and more coverage on the TV. And at our level, we've, we're really excited and building into waiting for Hull City Ladies season to start now. Um, as I say, we've been away for a couple of days, but it'd be nice to get down to the training once we get back, meet up with the girls and the Danny and Rachel again and, and find out what's going on and look forward to the pre-season friendlies both away and at home and hope that everyone who's got interested in the World Cup, not just through England but if you're local to Hull, get down to North Ferriby on the 4th of August and the 11th of August to see the Tigresses start on what hopefully will be another successful campaign. Yeah, definitely I could only echo that, we're looking forward to that already but um, yeah, a few more days in Leon to enjoy first so we'll uh, Get this uploaded and we'll talk to you on Sunday.